And welcome to our daily word this morning. Today's Friday, July 16th of the year 2020. Hard to believe we are in the second half of the month of July and we are moving forward rather quickly. It's kind of a rainy, sultry day out there, but um, it's a beautiful day to be alive, of course, and to celebrate our lives together. So this morning, I've chosen for our text this this bit of interesting piece of scripture, just two verses. And I'm going to share the two verses with you, but then I want to go back and put it in proper context for us. Now, you've noticed, I hope behind me, that I've put flame to my candle. It's a reminder of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. And so I hope you have your candles and have them lit as a reminder of the Holy Spirit's presence. Um, I uh, lit it really early this morning when I got here. I've been here um, over two and a half hours this morning trying to get some things done. I was in the sanctuary. Of course, I'm in there most mornings. I was in there practicing a little bit of music uh, this morning that I might sing later um, in the month or even in August. And so the flame has been um, burning for a while as a reminder of the presence of the Holy Spirit with me and with all of you. So hear these words, just these two verses, and then we'll put it in context. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, you might remember a few weeks ago when Jesus, when we hear the story of Jesus, um, when he talks about not having honor, a prophet, not having honor in his own hometown. You might remember that he arrives in his own hometown and there's many skeptics and they say of him, who is he? Who does he think he is, this son of a carpenter? Where does he get all these powers? And um, Jesus essentially um, shakes the dust from his feet, if you remember. And then at the end of that little piece that we talked about on that Sunday a couple of weeks ago, Jesus sends the disciples out two by two. He pairs them up and sends them out to go and do great things. Well, we can hear, we can hear a bit of this. Jesus sends them out and says, um, gave them a power over evil spirits. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if in any place you are not welcome or they don't listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and then healed them. And so the disciples have been gone for a while. And they've you have to assume they've done some miraculous things in this ministry that Jesus has given them. Um, then we hear the story from last week, you know, uh, John the Baptist is beheaded in that part of the story. And then we arrive at this part of the story where the disciples come back from their journey, Jesus having sent them out. And the scripture says to us that the, apostle gath the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. They came back to give a status report, if you will. And you can imagine um, all the things they had done and the impact that they must have had on the lives of many people they encountered. And we, we have a bit of glimpse of that because the scripture says many were coming and going. People had heard about all these miraculous things that were going to happen and it already happened. So much so that there was no time to even eat because... The needs were so great. And they went away into a deserted boat by themselves. They needed to get away. You know, one of our favorite places to go, um, Diane and I, and the kids, and since then we've taken Mindy and Connor, Kelsey's husband, has got to go one time. Uh, we love to go to Pigeon Forge and to Gatlinburg. And... We love to go and to shop and to ride go karts and to um, and to hike when I have the ability to hike. Maybe I'll never hike again, but I, ho I hope that I can. 
Um, we like to go there and just experience the ambiance of that place. There's, there's really nothing, for us at least, there's really nothing like it. The mountains and the fresh air and, and even the crowds. We don't mind the crowds and the shopping and the restaurants and the favorite places. I'm sure you have those you have those places or have had those places in your life. You know, we, we like to go to the lake too, although we haven't been there um, for a month. Um, but we'd like to go there and just, just go to those places because sometimes for us, you know, what we need to do is to do what the disciples did, to get away. Now, for me sometimes, believe it or not, um, it, I've changed a bit in this respect. For me sometimes... Um, my, my getting away is simply staying home, not going anywhere, not um, engaging in something else, but simply going home, putting the garage door down and simply being at home. Because you see, for all of us in our lives, we, we need this idea that we can get away. Now, for the disciples in Jesus, what follows, interestingly enough, is that they got away into the boat and the crowd just followed them. And the story that follows is the feeding of the 5,000 and all that takes place with that. But there is, this, there is this reminder that for all of us in our lives, you know, we need a break. We're not going to go to Gatlinburg this year. We've talked about it. The kids really wanted to go, um, but then because of so many people going, cabin prices have gotten very expensive. And of course, I just can't, I just can't go. We've talked about doing other things. We're, we're probably not going to accomplish them um, this year. But here's what I know. In all of our lives, as we live them, um, God is present with us. Whether it's on a vacation or, or simply staying home and putting our feet up, or whether it's being like for me when I get to go to the camper and hopefully that soon when this, when this moving process has finally um, ended. I don't know about you all, but we have stuff in both houses and that's a, that's a real challenging thing to try to get figured out. I hear the words of Jesus to the disciples, come away, let's go into the boat, but tell me what's been going on. And you know, for me, there is this idea that wherever we are and whatever we do, wherever we find ourselves, um, God is present with us. God seeks to refresh our souls, seeks to nourish our being, Maybe that's by ourselves. I, you know, I like to, I eat breakfast almost every day by myself. And, and people find that strange, but I, I take sermon work with me, um, or I, I simply find somebody to talk to in the restaurant. That's refreshing for my soul. And I think for us, as we live our lives, as we are sent out by Jesus to be bearers of good news, to share our lives with others, that it's there's also time that we just have to refresh ourselves and take the needed break from the challenges of life to then re-energize ourselves. You know, one of the reasons that I'm not going to take a vacation too is because I'm having surgery on August 16th and I'm going to be essentially off work for a couple weeks, couple three weeks. I don't I don't know how long that is. I'm not I'm not putting a number to it. But, but there is that reminder for us that no matter where we are in life, um, we have to find those times to reboot, if you will, and to refresh ourselves. And you know, often many of my colleagues ask me um, the question, how are you taking care of yourself? And you know, I'm not one of those people who can go away. I, I have colleagues who go away and take silent retreats for like a week. I think I would explode if I took a silent retreat. But what I say to them often, um, and maybe it's not the most healthy thing, 
But what do I say? What I say to them often is that I find the rebooting and the refreshing in sharing the story as the disciples shared with Jesus, telling them all that had happened. I find Wednesday nights gathered around summer in the Psalms as a refreshing, rebooting kind of time. I find Sunday morning gathering in conversation and worship as a, as a rebooting time that we share our lives with each other. But here's what we need to know. That we're sent out. And we're called back and we share the story and we're sent out again and we call back and to share the story. But in all of that, in all of that, God's presence is alive in us and moves in us and helps to reshape us. And, you know, I think for us, we all, we all need that. And maybe we just need to hear the words that God is present with us wherever we are. The midst of our joys and the midst of our perceived failures, in the midst of all the things we have going on, and in the midst of when we don't have enough going on, God is present with us. I think the best thing that Jesus did for the disciples was to get them in the boat and take them to the other side. And then, of course, all the people come and they're hungry and ministry continued. Their lives were meant to serve others as as I think our lives are meant to serve others. I'll tell you one last thing happened this morning. I, I was in the McDonald's drive-thru. I like to go there once in a while. And I just go through the drive-thru and sit in my car and eat my breakfast sandwich, watch the traffic. Well, this morning, it was rather crowded. Of course, it's Friday. And there were two cars behind me. And the car behind the car behind me kept beeping their horn at the guy right behind me. And he wasn't keeping up, but, but there was nowhere to go. And finally, they got into this shouting match about beeping horns and all that stuff. And I just kept watching, wondering what was going to happen. Well, I got to the window and I told the girl, boy, the people behind me are arguing. She said, it must be today. She said, a man came through the line today was mad at me because I wasn't taking his order fast enough at 6 a.m., she said, and he called her a name, a name that I'm not going to repeat, and I'm not even going to give you the letter it starts with because it is a reprehensible name. So she and I talked, and we had this brief conversation, and, you know, she said, at least people like you come through with a smile on your face and remind me why I do what I do. You see, our lives, our intersections that happen with each other, they're just vital. And if you and I, even in the McDonald's drive through to the lady who took my money today, if our intersections can cross and we can make a difference in each other's lives, then we will have told the story of what Jesus has done. And you see, friends, I believe that's I believe that's who God calls us to. And I believe that's who God calls me to. I drive away often thinking, okay, God, why did you put me in that situation? Why did I have to talk to her? Well, maybe that's because that's who God needs me to be in that moment um, at a little after seven this morning. So God's presence is with all of you in your lives, wherever you are, and whatever it is you have to accomplish today. Know of that presence, revel in it, rest in it, put your feet up in it, if you will. Just be reminded of it. Be reminded of it in the rain when it comes today. Be reminded of it in the food that you eat and the conversations that you share today. Know of God's love that surrounds you in such a powerful way. Know my love for all of you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 10.15. You can join us in person, of course, or join us on Facebook Live. I think I got my cameras worked out a little better. I think it worked better last week. And you can join us then again here on Monday morning. Have a great day and a great weekend. My love to all of you.